your stock at one point, I think, went to $100, but then it went down to six or something like that. At the peak of the internet bubble, our stock peaked somewhere around $113. Okay. And then after the internet bubble, uh, you know, busted open, our stock went down to six. It went from 113 to six in less than a year. So My annual shareholder that year starts with a one word sentence. And that one word sentence is the word, ouch. So most of those internet companies of the dot-com era are out of business. Yeah. You survived. What was it that made you to survive and virtually the rest of them are gone? Um, I, it's very, that whole period is very interesting because the stock is not the company and the company is not the stock. And so as I watched the stock fall from 113 to six, I was also watching all of our internal business metrics, number of customers, profit per unit, um, uh, you know, uh, everything you can imagine, defects, etc. Every single thing about the business was getting better and fast. And so as the stock price was going the wrong way, everything inside the company was going the right way. And um, uh, I, you know, so I wasn't, we didn't need to go back to capital markets. We didn't need more money. The only reason, uh, you know, a financial uh, bust like the internet bubble bursting is, you know, makes it really hard to raise money. But, you know, we already had the money we needed. So we just needed to continue to progress. Well, Wall Street kept saying, well, Amazon's not making any money. They're just getting customers. Where are the profits? Where are the profits? And Wall Street kept beating you up on that. And your response was, I don't really care what you think. Amazon was, uh, uh, you know, we, we, people always accused us of selling dollar bills for 90 cents and said, look, anybody can do that and grow revenues. That's not what we were doing. We always had positive gross margins. It's a fixed cost business. And so what I could see is that um, from the internal metrics is that what, at a certain volume level, um, that we would cover our fixed costs and the company would be profitable. つい先日、モルガン・スタンレーのチームがテスラのフリーモント工場を訪ねて、インベスター・リレーションズの説明を受け、工場見学もしたそうです。アナリストがそれを元に出したレポートによれば、テスラの需要は非常に高く、そのため資材高騰で生産コストが上がっても、価格決定力がとても強いと指摘しています。つまりコストの上昇を顧客に転嫁できるため、利益率を下げる必要が全くないということです。他の自動車メーカー同様に、半導体チップ不足は大きな問題ですが、他社に比べてそのダメージはかなり小さいですイーロン・マスクの最近の発言によればさまざまな対応によってその影響は昨年よりもかなり軽減されているということですテスラの対応とは設計変更による半導体の数を減らすことやソフトウェアの書き換えですまたバッテリー生産用の資材不足も LFP バッテリーに変更することで十分対応可能だといいますそしてベルリンとテキサスの新工場なしでも今年の生産台数の 50% 増加はほぼ間違いないということですフリーモント工場も上海工場も拡張を続けており生産台数は拡大していますつい最近テスラの車は値上げしたばかりですがそれでもオーダーが減ることは全くありませんテスラに限らず自分が保有している会社のビジネスにフォーカスすることが非常に大切ですもしビジネスが順調に伸びているのであればこの大幅下落は絶好の買い増しのチャンスだと言えるでしょうもし買い増しはしなくても将来の大きな成長に期待して購入した株ならばそのストーリーをもう一度見直してみることも大切だと言えるでしょう株価がどんなに下がっても一つだけ確かなのはインフレも戦争も永遠には続かないということですそのことを踏まえて短期的に見れば株価と会社の価値には何の関係もないということを Amazon のケースからも学べると思います最後までご視聴いただきありがとうございました。